You know that feeling when there's a, a little rock band that you love and no one really talks about them or cares about them and you say, I wish these guys had more success and then they had more success and then you're like, I kind of want my little band back. Yeah. Hey, what's up, bookworms? It's Mike here today to talk about a little thing called A Song of Ice and Fire, and to you TV-only people, A Game of Thrones. Now, I want to preface this video by saying I have no idea what I'm going to say today. It's just something that I had on my mind. The reason that I did not do any Song of Ice and Fire or, or Game of Thrones content on this channel up to this point is because after the uh, the series, the uh, or more particularly the disastrous last season of the series, you feel differently? That's okay. That's okay. We're okay to disagree here. Um, it seemed like everyone on YouTube was basically turning the series and the books and everything about it into uh, nothing but like Star Wars hate clickbait kind of thing. Like there's a ton of channels out there that have made their name off of hating on, on Disney Star Wars. Of which I'm, I'm one of those people who, who does not like Disney Star Wars. But I was like, I'm not. I'm going to make one video talking about it. And I did that, and and I'm I'm not going to make a whole channel off of hating something that I've spent my whole life loving. So I was like, I have been a fan of George R. R. Martin's Song of Ice and Fire books since the year 2000, and I was like, I'm not going to make a bunch of videos, basically to get a bunch of subscribers and a bunch of cheap clicks, just by because everyone was so mad about the TV show. So what I said was, I'm going to let some time pass, and then I'm going to do what I would have done anyways, and that's talk about the books. Um, let me kind of set it up for you. At the time when I discovered these books for the first time, and I kind of touched on this in my uh, in my first law videos and, and my why I decided to read Wheel of Time videos, is that when I first discovered these books, it's because uh, a roommate I had at the time was really recommending some, some new books to me. And uh, I was like, look, I've never been able to find anything you know, quite like Lord of the Rings. And, and I kind of mentioned to him, you know what I kind of like? I kind of like Lord of the Rings, but maybe like something that's kind of grown with us. Because I mean, Lord of the Rings was great when I was younger. And it's still fantastic. It's still one of my favorite series of all time. I'm not detracting from Lord of the Rings at all. Uh, okay, let me get that straight. But I said, I wish I had something that had maybe, I don't know, a little bit more adult themes to it. And this was long before I discovered uh, the first law. And it actually wasn't out yet. But uh, he said, well, I think you'd really like this series called A Game of Thrones. Or this book called a Game of Thrones, because that's what it was called. It was just called A Game of Thrones. I was like, ah, okay, what's it about? And he kind of told me, and I'm like, ah, it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound fantasy enough for me, you know? I mean, it has a, it has a dragon on the front cover, and, and then it's saying that there might not be dragons. So it's, 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 the dragons are long gone. So I was like, I don't know. I think I need something a little more fantasy. And so he recommended Will of Time. And uh, long story short, I read part of uh, Eye of the World, and it just wasn't for me. Again, that's all in that video. You can see that here if you missed it about, about why I waited so long to read Wheel of Time. Obviously, I have a different opinion now. Uh, but as a 20-year-old, a uh, that was not what I was looking for, really. And I went back to, okay, I'll just go and read this Game of Thrones now. And it blew me away. It blew me away so much in so many, in so many ways. And guys, if you haven't read the books or you haven't watched the show at this point... First of all, what rock have you been hiding under? And second of all, yes, there will be spoilers in this video about the books, okay? Um, at this point, I don't know how you avoided everything or why you're even interested in clicking on this video if you don't know these things. But when I was reading that first book, what blew me away is it was at a time before shows like 24 and stuff like that where you were killing main characters off. And you were led this whole book to believe, all right, all right, Ned is going to be the hero of this series and... When George kills him off in that first book, I literally threw that book across the room and immediately ran over and grabbed it, you know, because I, I wanted to see what kept happening. And it was so energizing to me to read a book like that where, okay, you always hear these things like, oh, there's high stakes, but you always knew that the protagonists were going to be okay. This was a book where it's like, first of all, I'm not even sure that these protagonists are protagonists. Like I said, these are fantasy tropes that are common now, 
But in the year 2000, I wasn't reading anything like this yet. I had, I still haven't read Black Company, so I know some people will go to that. But I hadn't seen anything like this before. So that's what really drew me into the series. So much so that when by the time I got to the, the third book, and I was like, okay, I'm fully on board here. I'm fully on board with Rob Stark's going to be the new Ned. Right, this, this series is going to be about Rob now. Oh, shit. You know, so... Two major events in these two in out of these three books just completely floored me in a way to where I had to put the book down because I was emotionally exhausted. So, yes, um, I know a lot of new fandom has has come out of this, and, and, and I kind of joked in the intro about how uh, uh, I used to beg for people to to read this series. So, I had someone talk about it, guys. I've been reading this series for long. I used to have to go to bulletin boards on the internet to find people to talk to this series about. Uh, I, I I constantly pull up the tweet. Uh, that I that I made about a month before the series premiered and said, hey, is anybody interested in watching this Game of Thrones series on HBO? Because the, those books were, were like a, an experience for me. Crickets, you know? And that was followed by, you know, just six, seven years later, Game of Thrones was trending worldwide on every social media outlet and every news circuit there is, you know? So it was it was kind of crazy. It's kind of like when I used to really love Metallica as a kid and everybody's like, oh, whatever, that, that, that heavy metal stuff. Nobody's into that. And then Metallica, like their Black Album came out and everybody loved them. And it was kind of like, kind of want my little band back. So I say that and sure, I feel that way. But no, I'm glad more people got to experience this. And honestly, this is going to be my heel turn part of the video. I'm glad you guys get to share in the misery with me now. Because I hear all the people who just recently read like the five books and they're like, oh, I think it's stupid that I have to wait for the sixth book. Welcome to real fucking life. <laughs> Some of us have been waiting for longer than you've been born, probably. Okay, uh, I the first three books were out when I got into the series, and they were a really good read. Feast for Crows, mixed opinions on it. Felt like forever for Dance with Dragons. Guys, Dance with Dragons came out before my kids were born. They're seven and four now. Okay, so uh, spare me your, oh, I've been waiting for six months for Winds of Winter story. But the whole point of this video is I want to talk about the state of the fandom. Obviously, there was a lot of vitriol out there after the way the series ended. And I understand that, I guess, high 90% of the fandom has never read the books and will never read the books. That's fine. I'm going to talk about the books because that's what I'm into. Uh, but honestly, I feel like the final season of the series poisoned the IP so much that I think it's a mistake that HBO is trying to go forward with a prequel series. They, they, they were doing one. They shot a pilot. Apparently they dipped 15 to 25 million into a pilot and then they decided not to go to series with it. And instead they're going to be uh, adapting uh, Fire and Blood. That's the book that George put out last year, which kind of reads like an encyclopedia. And I, I don't know. I Personally, I feel like there are so many a other amazing fantasy series out there that now that HBO has people's trust that they can say, hey, we're going to try this other popular fantasy series. You remember how you guys liked Game of Thrones? Give this a chance. I feel like they should be doing that. I understand they want to capitalize on the name and they're trying to compete with Disney Plus coming out. Netflix still kind of kicking their ass in original content. So I understand why they're using uh, Game of Thrones to try to keep going. But I really feel like, guys, you, sh you should wait a couple of years because I really feel like it's in a bad place right now. All you have to do is search Game of Thrones on YouTube and find 9 to 1 ratio of negative to positive videos about it. Uh, this isn't really going to be about that because this is about the books, like I said. But I did want to talk about the current state of the fandom. And when it comes in regards to the book, I just got to ask, does anybody really care anymore? Now listen, I'm not saying that when the book comes out, I won't be there day one and I won't move it straight to the top of my TBR list, because I will. But I think it was around... Four or five years ago, I just kind of stopped caring. You know, I kind of, after Dance with Dragons, like, okay, he got this whole part that he, this little knot that he was stuck in that he always referred to in his not a blog that he was stuck in. And now everything's going to be smooth sailing. I really believe that. I really believe that. And four or five years later, I was like, okay, I don't believe it. And I actually made a bet with my wife. Uh, this is still when, <laughs> this is still when uh, Barack Obama was president in America. And I said, I think we will have two presidents after Barack Obama before we see Winds of Winter. And she kind of chuckled, and I kind of chuckled too, and now I'm thinking it might actually happen. So, I don't know. Uh, he says that he's not working on this new series for HBO, 
because until he's done with Winds of Winter, and I'm like, yo, how about you finish Song of Spring too? How about you just sit down and finish both of them? But like I said, I, I don't want to say I don't care. It's to the point where I just I stopped counting on it. I stopped counting on it a while back. You know, uh, I, I actually had said uh, at one point I was so frustrated that I started counting the show as the official canon. That was a mistake. But, you know, as far as, as the show goes, I, I kind of always saw those cracks in the foundation. I always said, and I've got the tweets to back this up, I'm worried about what happens when they run out of source material. And this is back before Dan and Dave were like the, you know, the, the meme of the internet where everyone was like, oh, I trust them wholeheartedly. Whatever they want to do, I trust them. Yeah, believe it or not, there was most people were saying that. I trust them. And I was always like, you know, it's been a pretty literal adaptation at this point. I'm curious to see what happens when they run out of source material. Even though I really did believe they were working off of uh, George's notes a lot. Uh, now there's all these rumors about that they had a big falling out. And George was like, screw you guys, because they thought that they could do it better. Who knows? Who knows what all that stuff is? And sure, a lot of the, the tell-all book about this last couple of seasons of Game of Thrones is going to be great one day. It really it really will. And it'll happen eventually. I just don't expect it anytime soon. But now Dan and Dave have quit. They've quit Star Wars and stuff. So, I mean, it's... It's just become a big mess. Again, though, back to the books. Are you excited for Winds of Winter? I wouldn't say I'm not excited. I just, I kind of guess I reached a point of indifference a few years back where I just, if it happens, great. I'm going to read it. Of course I'm going to read it. I'm going to dissect it. I'm going to analyze it. I'm going to do with all the stuff that I always did with, with, with Song of Ice and Fire books. I just don't count on it anymore because I just don't believe that the series is ever going to be finished. You know, I don't believe he's going to pass it off. I said I thought that he should pass the series off, even if it's just go written, ghost written by Joe Abercrombie, because I feel like he'd be the best to do it. But I just he, he's definitely going to take the ending of this story to his grave, in my opinion. He's not exactly the pinnacle of health. He's not a young man, and he's not a quick writer. I mean, he's averaging seven to eight years between these books right now. So... I think that's where my motivation for it went. And I think that's uh, kind of the whole reading community. When the series got super popular, uh, you know, they kind of got sick of being called elitist, book elitist or whatever, because we were like, hey, you know, in the books this happened. And we actually, you know, got our jollies off watching you guys flip your shit about, you know, character deaths. If this character dies, I'm out. I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. And you got, you know, the next the next week, the show had its high re highest ratings ever. So we kind of, I can see why people thought we were kind of jerks about that stuff. We just had a great time watching other people, you know, melt down about stuff that we melted down reading, you know, years and years ago. So uh, I, I can definitely see where that tag came from. Personally, I, I mean, the guy I do the podcast with, Danny, he'd never actually read the books. And I never, you know, looked down on him because he didn't read the books or whatever. But he was actually more disappointed with the final season than I was, which, which has become like kind of a running joke between us. Because, uh, you know, he liked Last Jedi and, and I did not. And, uh, you know... Uh, he jokes all the time about oh, only toxic fans, that, that that good old joke. That only toxic fans didn't like Last Jedi. And I'm like, oh, well, you know, all them toxic fans didn't like Game of Thrones Season 8. So it's become like a, a nice running joke between us. You know, trying to make something positive out of something negative. That's why I think we get along like we do. But uh, when's a winner? I, I mean, I do believe we'll see it. I really do. 2021 at the earliest. But I do not think we'll ever see a Song of Spring. And I have a feeling that he'll... Uh, He'll Brent Weeks it. And what I mean by that is he'll say, oh, you know what? Seven books isn't going to be the... I just realized I had so much material left that, uh, yeah, I'm not going to end it with book seven. So we won't see this series ended. I really do not believe we will see an ending for it. Um, I mean, he gave those interviews where he said that he felt like the HBO series could have gone 13 to 15 years because there's so much content, not only that they left out, but that he still had. That doesn't tell me that he's got two books left in him. That tells me there's a lot left. So who knows? He keeps writing all these encyclopedias and prequels and stuff and wild cards and all that. But I don't know. Where are you guys at? Do you guys think that this is actually going to happen? Have you given up? Do you even care anymore? I feel like the fandom for this for this series, um, which I said I know is dominated by the show fans. It really is. Uh, I feel like it was on everyone's lips and now no one talks about it. In fact, when I see someone talking about it now on Twitter, it's like, crickets no one even responds to it anymore it's like no one even cares anymore and it's rather amazing because you kind of go back and think is that the reason that show was so popular is because the books are incredible i say the first three books are on par with any fantasy i've ever written and it read and in fact it might be above any fantasy i've ever read those first three books four uh, 
kind of a setup and separating the characters. So if you count four and five as one book, then it was pretty good. If not, if you count those two as one, I think it's pretty good. But uh, as standalones, they're just kind of okay. And I think that also kind of helped to lessen the blow of this series just kind of being stagnant since was it 2011, I think, that came out. That's that's nuts to me. It's nuts to me. And it's a, it's, it's a thing that only Patrick Rothfuss has found a way to try to duplicate. So, guys, leave your uh, comments below. Please tell me, you know, are you guys still excited for the series? What's your current state of, of, of Song of Ice and Fire slash Game of Thrones fandom? Are you still really excited for new content? Are you still really excited for another? Are you excited for another series on HBO? Be honest, guys. There are no wrong answers here. And I'll hit you up in the comments.